We are in mid-May. We are essentially every team's played 40 games. I think the Tigers have only played 39. Uh, but 40, 41 games, uh, that usually equals the quarter poll of the season. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of give our assessments of our all below 500 teams. Ooh, it's not good. No. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the Cubs here because they are leading the A-hole standings. Uh, I think three games Somehow. below five. Yeah, three games below five hundred. They're actually only a percentage point ahead of the Tigers in the standings. I think it's uh, four sixty two to four sixty three. So it was a barn burner of mediocrity. Uh, Cubs have been almost exactly what I thought they were going to be. We we did our preseason predictions. We we also did our preseason grade or our, our essentially our off season grades for what the GMs of each of our teams did or did not do. Was I gave the hurt? Cubs and oh, right. Jed Hoyer a C minus mm. and accused them. Generous. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, accused them of confusing activity with accomplishment. Correct. A whole, a long explanation of what that meant. There's a lot of moves they made, but I'm not sure what it really all amounted to. And pretty much exactly what we've seen. The, the Pagoda projections and uh, all the, all the preseason projections other than, crazy diehard <laughs> whatever Cubs fans that were way too optimistic. Everyone had them in the mid seventies as a win total. And that's exactly the pace they're on right now. I think if the season ended today, or if you multiply their wins by four, you'd be at 75 or I think it'd be a total of 77 maybe, or maybe I did that yeah. the wrong way. I think I looked at their number of games below 500. Multiply. Oh, by and four. Did, yeah, right. So mu- multiply Three games below 500, you get 12. So that would make them a 77 win team. No, a 75 win team. I'm sorry. I'm getting all this math wrong, but whatever. It was mid 70s. That's that's kind of what I thought they were. That's exactly what they've been. Um, They've been, you know, the solid defensive team, we thought. The, the bullpen has been shaky. And I think we saw that coming, although I was a huge proponent of Michael Fulmer coming over. Uh, who just gave up another another big home run, late innings home run last night in Houston. Not fun. Um, another thing I, you know, I, th- I think we saw all this coming, but one thing I did not see coming was getting blown out by the Twins this weekend. Oof. At least on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, that was fucking assholes. Thanks for yeah. showing up, Cubs. <laughs> yeah, disheartening. Maybe they did it just to sabotage the White Sox. But he also think- sabotaged your team, who's actually like, you know, a lot closer than the White Sox <laughs> right now. Well, yeah, I don't think the Cubs think about the think about the Tigers too much, where they might might consider if, sabotage. If sabotage. Actually, I'm going to talk about that. Might talk about that a little bit later as we get deeper into this. But sabotaging uh, Javi Baez, Smitty. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, another part of my accusations against the Cubs in the off season for their their actions were just to kind of boost TV ratings to actually get some get some uh, actual major league players on the field for people to watch. And I think that's worked. I think they are a more entertaining product. Uh, at least you know, the record isn't really showing. They are a little bit ahead of last year, but they, at least they are, there are major league players. So I fell for that trap. I am watching Cubs games. Um, and honestly, yeah, honestly, if it wasn't for this last week or so, the, the record would be a lot different. They've they've struggled recently. had a, had a tough May so far, actually. But uh, one question is: as long as I'm talking about the TV broadcast, I don't know if you heard about this. I'm sure you didn't. But Boog Shambi was not in calling the Cubs game on Marquee Network last night due to travel issues. Like he literally couldn't get to Houston to broadcast the game, so they brought in Pat Hughes from the radio booth and had Zach Zaidman take over for him in the radio on the radio side of things. I've never heard of a, a broadcaster not being able to make it to the game. I haven't, I haven't seen an explanation about it. Hmm. Uh, have you ever heard of that? Like, wasn't able to, wasn't able no. to No. I mean, normally you travel with the team unless he was doing a national broadcast on Saturday. That's all I'm and... saying. It, could, it would have been Sunday Night Baseball. If, if I mean, anybody. yeah, Sunday Night Baseball. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was Carl Ravage. So I don't know what the hell Boog was doing, how, how he missed the charter. I, I had the... 
crazy idea. Maybe maybe he just went on some random, you know, 80s style cocaine binge and just lost his mind. Maybe he was kicked off the charter. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. Boog is, uh, he uses social media quite a bit. And he doesn't hasn't posted anything about it, so I was I was kind of surprised. So it leads to reckless speculation, like I just did. Uh, Boog, tell us what happened. Maybe he's talking about it on the broadcast tonight. Uh, we're recording on a Tuesday evening. Uh, I think the Cubs come on in about a half hour, so maybe I'll have a better explanation than than a random eighty style cocaine binge for the Boog. But yeah, I'm gonna. The Cubs are pretty much what I expected. I think they've been hamstrung by their owner, which I have gone at gone over at length for years now i think the chicago theme yeah the strategy of the general manager <laughs> jed hoyer didn't do much to change things in the offseason it was a lot of smoke and mirrors i thought and but honestly the the, the product they put on the field is what i expected so it's weird I, I would give them a lower grade but it's i think it's a c c plus uh, maybe I'll go with a C plus just because it's what I expected. I mean, I gave them a C minus in the off season, so they're they're right there. So I don't I don't think I would give it a, a worse or better grade than that. Um, you you can chime in here if you'd like. Yeah, well, as well. I mean, I would I I think there's disturbing trends and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Um, they're they're heading into White Sox territory. In fact, whoa, 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 whoa! Let's yeah. not get a hell of ahead of ourselves here. So that, that, the, that's crazy here's, talk. Here's the four worst teams since April 22nd. The Cubs are four, the Sox are three, <laughs> the Mets are two, and the A's are one. They have the okay. worst records in baseball since um, April 22nd. How'd you pick April 22nd? I'm curious. Uh, it was a stat that a uh, Cubs beat reporter pulled up on the disturbing trend of the Cubs. All right. You want to hear something even worse? Uh, you were throwing out uh, some saber metrics on terrible White Sox offense. The Cubs have now. It was? Wait, 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 a, few, a few weeks ago. Like, okay. uh, did I just uh, black ground, out? What, what ground, happened here? Ground ball ratio and all that we were discussing like maybe three weeks ago. The okay. Cubs have now surpassed the White Sox in ground balls at 45.7% of their batted balls are ground Yikes. balls and 10.4 percent of their fly balls are in field pop-ups there they wow. have the offense that was near the top of the league in that first three weeks of the season has completely fallen off the table um so that, all i'll say is it's gonna i think it's gonna continue to get worse and the reason i say that is we're talking about they weren't able to close deals on some really bad teams like the Washington Nationals. They lost a series to them. Um, who was the other Their schedule's team? getting harder is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this is something I had pointed out when we were, we were passing out our, our fun little rewards and accolades at the beginning of the season that the Cubs are going to hit a reality of a harder schedule and, and just, to your point, you gave them a C minus to start the year. You're not, weren't expecting anything, but I think it's worse than even that. So that's all. The trends are, the trend lines are, are not good there. So. Yeah. I guess the only thing I'll say to that, at least offensively, you know, we're missing, missing Nico Horner, who's coming back shortly. Um, not that it's going to change all things. I'm also wondering when the cutoff was for the statue or, you were just citing with the, well, it's from Fangraph, so yesterday. Okay, so that's even with the addition of Chris Christopher Morrell, who has gone fucking crazy this week in his first week up. Um, yeah, again, you're you're probably right. I'm not. We'll, we'll grade the second quarter, the second quarter when we get there, or the first half of the season as we get there. And you, your comments may prove prescient. Right now, I'm giving a C plus, mainly because I like to make the graphics for all these segments. And a C is a Cubs logo, and I'll add a plus to it. it oh, just works wow. really well. So, I already use uh, C, the C minus, that same idea for the C minus off season grade. So, yeah, I wouldn't C give them more. Well. I, I wouldn't give them anything above a C minus, but I give them a solid D. You know, right now. So, but that's well, my opinion. So that yeah, right. I make the graphics. So yeah. <laughs> Word
Call Media.